So the last couple weeks I've been talking about how you leverage asset framework, event frames, things like that. Why is it even important? Last week I talked about how it fits into an advanced analytics project. You know, that's great, but what if you're not there yet? Can I do something simple that might help me? And we actually ran into something here just this week where doing simple analytics in real time in the Pi system can actually help you find potential problems. So if you look on this screen, this is a dashboard that one of our customers looks at every single day. This is something that's templatized. They're using collections in Pi Vision to understand what is going on with certain pieces of equipment. And they're looking at things like pressures, flows, temperatures, currents, things like that. But what's interesting is on here, there's actually a glaring problem that is about to happen. And it's a little bit difficult to see. And one of the discussions I have with a customer is, you know, looking at this visually, you have to understand, you have to really know what you're looking for to understand what is going on and what the potential problem is. So I want to take you through what we've done to help ma facilitate an easier process and have more people who don't have to have as much subject matter expertise to know, hey, there could be a potential problem here. So one of the things that we noticed um, or that they had noticed is if they have a leak, which is the problem that we're, we're detecting here, they see a drop in flow and a rise in pressure. So what does that look like? So what I did was I actually, let's go back to just like a, a, a one month so I can look at exactly the same point in time as I'm looking at, whoops. So what if I want to look at exactly that same point in time on this other screen, right? Well, I'm going to give it away. It's this asset right here that has a problem. So if I zoom in on just pressure and flow, you really can't tell that something's going on here. Now, let me back up in time. Let's, let's back up about three or four months instead of just one month. Well, now you can see that, hey, maybe there's a problem. It looks like flow may have started dropping. Well, actually, let me leave this in edit mode. You know, for sure, flow may have started dropping like right in here, okay? And pressure, you know, whoops, let me draw another, I don't know, maybe like somewhere right in here, you know, we have a problem. And so if you look at it, you know, let's look at the dates on that. So maybe somewhere like mid-June, we can see that there was a problem in in pressure, but flow, we don't really see the drop really visually until maybe mid to late July. Well, how do we make this easier? Well, what's interesting is you notice the this flow signal is all over the place. You know, there's a lot of differences in it, and it's really hard to tell long term what is going on. So there's a couple of things that we did to make it very easy to see that there's a problem here. And it's all done with Pi Analytics. Very, it's very like simple to do once you understand, you know, what your baselines are and, and and things of that nature. So what we did was we were able to take just some simple averages. So let me put this flow rate up here again. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the hourly average of the flow rate on here. I'm going to format this trend and I'm going to make it a single scale and I'm going to put the hourly average up top. I'm going to make it white. And then I'm going to take the flow rate and I'm going to make it kind of a dark gray so that it really kind of stands out. So as you can see, you know, the hourly flow is definitely dropping. Um, you can see it a little bit clearer, I think. Um, you know, maybe you can kind of see that, I don't know, maybe more like, maybe back in, uh, in here, maybe you can even see that there's a drop potentially. So let's, let's take this one step further. Let me zoom out a little bit. 
And now let's take let's take the uh, daily flow average. Okay, and then look at let's look at the monthly flow average. And we actually took a baseline of when this this piece of equipment was running really well. What is the flow that should have been? So let's let's take that. Let's put that on as a target. Okay. So now what we can do is let's format that trend. Let's see what this looks like. So now I have a single scale. Um, let's put let's make the the daily average. Let's make it gray as well. Let's make the monthly average kind of a blue color. Again, I'm trying to mute a few things, but let's make your target green and let's dot it. We can even make it a little bit thinner where it's not quite so prominent. Well, here you can definitely see there is a drop off that happens and it's way before, you know, even the other detections, you can start to see a separation in the signal. We're going to do the same thing for pressure, but flow was the one that you really couldn't see. So a simple smoothing of the signal, and all this was done with, with Pi Analytics. We take a monthly average, we look back if it was running, and the, val the flow is not zero, what was my average over the last 30 days? Um, we also take for the, the daily average, you know, if it's non-zero, what was my average? So here you can see that the trend is, is very much downward. You're starting to see a separation in monthly average and daily average and from the target, from the baseline, like where you've been running, where you should be running. So what we did was we took something that, that is very visual. The, the Whoever looks at this really has to understand what they're looking at to understand if there's a problem. And here this was a 30-day window. So here's what we decided to do was we, we decided to make kind of a similar display and I, I looked at you know basically a, a very similar point in time and here's that asset that we were looking at you see this this dip but we've also got some red color on here hey there's a problem there there is something going on here so let's go back to maybe like June 18th and let's let the data refresh here okay so you can see that the daily average has started to drop. The hourly average has started to drop. You know, I haven't picked up, you know, any other problems. The one next to it may have a problem potentially, you know, but let, let's go on to like, say, July 1st, right? Let's see, make sure. Yep. Okay, July 1st. Now you start to see there's a lot more lit up here. And I potentially have some issues with some other pieces of equipment as well. But visually, instead of having to interpret all of these signals and not really know what's good and what's bad, you know, here I can take a, a, a very quick look and say, you know what, I know what is, what is happening here. Is this something I need to deal with? And if you look, you can see this downward trend. You're like, well, there's definitely something going on. This could definitely be a leak. And this is this is actually, we, we looked at this, and this was a couple of months of potential time that the customer could have saved in knowing they had a leak. Now, if you look at this leak over this two-month period, and you say, well, what is the gap between what I should have produced out of this piece of equipment versus what I didn't produce out of this piece of equipment? That equal to a full day's production out of all of these pieces of equipment. So think about that. In one piece of equipment, I lost a full month's worth of production over a two-month period. So now if I can do that repair easier, if I can do it faster before I knew before, well, now I can potentially save a day's production, do a much less expensive repair, and save a bunch of money. So, you know, and, and this is a very simple set of analytics here. Just monthly and, and, and hourly averages and daily averages here. Just to smooth out a signal so that you can see a long-term trend. So I, I think, you know, sometimes I don't want to gloss over. Everybody's like gunning after advanced analytics. It's great. We're, we are on that train. However, don't ignore sometimes something very simple 
can be extremely powerful. So here's the thing. If you're just using pi as a flat, or any other historian for that matter, as a flat tag structure and you're looking at trends, right? My, my counsel to you is you're looking at a lot of trends here. That's great. You're looking at it every day. Wonderful. How about letting it tell you what's going on by doing some simple analytics? How about every day I get a report or I get an email notification that says, here's the pieces of equipment that are out of spec today. And if I start to see a long-term trend, well, then maybe I go look at this you know, trend. I keep seeing the same piece of equipment show up. Or maybe we even write some analytics that says, hey, if, if, if a piece of equipment shows up on the report, you know, and is red for a week consecutively, we drop you an email and say, hey, you probably ought to go look at this. Let's say you don't have time to look at this particular display every day. And, you know, that way you have this proactive knowledge of there could be a potential equipment problem. And now I can take proactive care on it. So I think don't ignore the simple analytics just because everybody's trying to get to advanced analytics, machine learning, multivariate data analysis, and all those kind of things. I'm not saying those are bad things. They're not. However, sometimes simple is really good. And this is proof. This is hundreds of thousands of dollars for this customer and potential savings. Don't overlook it.